Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. You will learn today the slob rule. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Here is the left bite wing, and as it appears, the upper left fore is post cramped. But can we determine which canal is opposed engaging it? Is it the buccal or the palatal? When two roots are superimposed on the radiograph, it is difficult to evaluate them both. In order to visualize the roots clearly, two radiographs are taken at oblique angles. So the vertical position is fixed and the tube is moved horizontally to create image number two. The horizontal tube shift will result in a film with the overlapped roots to move apart, as you can see in the periapical image. SLOB stands for same lingual opposite buckle. When the root moves in the same direction as the horizontal shift of the tube, it is said to be lingual or palatal. If the root moves in an opposite direction to the shift of the tube, then the root is said to be buccal. So for us to understand the slob concept further, let's assume the upper left fore is post crowned. Externally, we can only see the crown. And here it is. The maxilla and the mandible are faded to visualize the roots. Pay more attention to the upper left fore. The root appears to be one because the buccal and the palatal canals are superimposed on each other from this view. Okay, so for us to determine the position of the post, we need to have two images, remember. Let us replicate the bite wing and the periapical from before. Here is the left side, and here is our bite wing. The upper left fore is post crowned and root filled. Okay, we need to have the second x-ray. This time, we are moving slightly mesial from our previous position. Here is the periapical. The new x-ray is showing upper left 2 and 3. So let us bring our two images together and understand the slob rule in easy 5 steps. You need to identify one image as your base. In this example, the bite wing is our base and the periapical is our image 2. We need to select two objects that are visible on both images. One has to be fixed and the other is the unknown, the one we need to find the position of. So here, upper left four is the fixed one and the red dot marks the post crown as the unknown image. Now we need to determine which direction the images appear to move in. Here, image 2 appears to move mesially from image 1 because in image 2 we are now seeing upper left 2 and 3 which were not visible in image 1. Next, let us determine where the red dot has moved in relation to the fixed object, the upper left 4. The red dot seems to be moving away from the direction of the mesial shift. So by using this slob rule, same lingual opposite buckle, the red dot is moving in the opposite direction. Hence, therefore, the post is engaging the buccal canal. Let us visualize this in 3D. Here is our base image. And as we move more mesial, showing more anterior teeth, the buccal side is going away from us and the palatal or the lingual are coming towards us. Do you see this? Let's repeat this again. Okay, now the concept has been explained and we know the slob rule applies in all aspects of dentistry. Let's put the theory into practice with real x-rays. Remember the five steps, always keep them in mind. We are trying to determine which canal is the post engaging in on the upper right four. Image one is our base image. The fixed object on both images is the upper right four. And the unknown object, which we are trying to find the position of, is the post. Image two appears to be moving more mesially because we can see the upper right three and two. And as it happened to appear, it, the post is moving with the mesial shift. Therefore, using the slob rule, same lingual opposite buckle, we can say the post is engaging in the palatal root. In, in example two, we are trying to find where is the amalgam filling placed on the lower right four? Is it on the buccal or the lingual surfaces? Again, image one is our base image. 
the fixed object is the lower right fall, and the unknown is the amalgam filling. Image 2 appears to be moving mesially, and as we can see the amalgam filling is moving away or opposite to the horizontal shift, therefore using slob rule we can say the amalgam filling is placed on the buccal surface of the lower right fall. Here is example 3. Where is the upper left 2 in relation to the upper left 1? Can you find out the answer using the 5 steps? Do not worry, we are going through the stages. Image 1 is our base image. The fixed object is the upper left 1 and the unknown is the upper left 2. There seemed to be a distal shift from image 1 to 2 and the upper left 2 seems to be moving with this shift. Therefore, it is palatally positioned to upper left 1. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for listening and I really hope you benefited today.